Women March on Washington Against the Rights of Women. The Trump administration announces it's pulling out of the TPP and the EU votes to grant human rights to electronic persons. It's Skywatch TV for Monday, January 23rd, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, Donald Trump is president of the United States. Just let that sink in for a minute. We might feel differently in four years, but it's nice to enjoy it now while it still feels good. Now, besides the violent protesters who rampaged through D.C. over the weekend, smashing windows, setting things on fire, um, half a million women, maybe more, swamped Washington, D.C. to protest something over the weekend. The turnout was double the original estimate. Um, It was a large gathering, more than half a million probably, featured speakers, celebrities, and a protest walk along the National Mall. Scarlett Johansson and Madonna were just two of the celebrities who showed up. Um, Madonna dropping the F-bomb a number of times on live television. Scarlett Johansson, microphone got turned off when she started slamming Ivanka Trump. Madonna also publicly fantasizing about blowing up the White House, something she had to walk back later on her Instagram account. Didn't really mean it, Secret Service. Now, the media made a point of portraying this gathering as a grassroots movement founded by a concerned grandmother from Hawaii. That's not entirely accurate. Between the election in November and this past weekend, you had to pull a lot of strings to get that many people moved from all over the country to Washington, D.C. I mean, that's not a lot of time to plan for a gathering like this. I mean, think about the last time you had to plan a cross-country vacation. Really, you're going to pull it off in eight weeks? Not quite so easy to do. Um, A former reporter for the Wall Street Journal started digging into the finances of some of the groups that were co-sponsoring or partnering together to bring the Women's March to Washington and found that more than 50 of the groups had financial ties to billionaire George Soros. Now, it's easy to portray Soros as the, um, the man behind the string, the puppet master. Just remember, he's only the human face on the real entities behind the spirit, the, you know, the spirits behind this movement. Um, let's not get caught up in pointing a finger at him particularly. As Christians, we should be a little more discerning than that. Now, ironically, again, this was called a women's march, but certain groups of women were not really welcome. Any woman who was pro-life, in fact, was, uh, made, it was made clear to them that they were not going to be part of this march. One liberal feminist writing in the New York Times Uh, who voted for Trump, by the way, uh, opted to miss the event because she said it was pretty clear from the people she interacted with that this was really just a march for women who were anti-Trump. And other uh, news accounts made it clear this was more than just a pro-abortion anti-Trump march. It was uh, a march that made white women who were anti-Trump pro-abortion feel unwelcome. This animosity, even within the anti-Trump movement, is part of the broader strategy by the powers, principalities, thrones, dominions, rulers of spiritual darkness to keep we humans in general, and we Christians in particular, angry at one another. Because regardless of where we fall on the political spectrum, if we are angry at one another, if we hate one another, the enemy has already won. Now, I use the word irony, and I will use it again here because the irony of this march is stupendous. One of the organizers, Linda Sarsour, uh, one of four coordinators for the Women's March, is the executive director of the Arab American Association of New York. She is openly pro-Sharia. She wants Sharia law in the United States. She tweets things like this. Nice when your loans and credit cards are interest-free, just saying, hashtag just saying. Yeah, okay, your loans, your, your credit cards are interest-free under Sharia law, but gays are executed. Women can be beaten by their husbands with impunity. Uh, they don't have the same divorce rights. Husband can just divorce a woman by going before a Sharia court judge and saying, I divorce her, I divorce her, I divorce her. Um, women have to be subservient to their husbands. They own no marital property. Joint property in a Sharia, a marriage under Sharia law, that's doesn't exist. It all belongs to the husband. And ironically, under Sharia law, Hillary Clinton would never be president. 
which makes the official poster for the march, which was designed by the same artist who did that uh, iconic Hope poster for the Barack Obama 2008 campaign. Incredibly ironic. Notice the hijab, the Islamic headscarf made from the American flag, which, by the way, is what Linda Sarsour and people who support her organization want. Women dressed like this in the United States apparently means that women marching in Washington, D.C. were marching for the freedom to be made subservient to men. Does this make any sense to you? I mean, the, the best portrayal, I mean, the summary of this whole thing was put into cartoon form by a newspaper in Israel. Yeah, pretty much. And if you think I'm making too much of the Islamic connection here, uh, we should point out that Linda Sarsour met recently with an accused financier of the terrorist group Hamas. That's just one of the four women, of course, responsible for the Women's March. Uh, nice. This really requires prayer. As I said before, if we just get angry about this, the enemy has already achieved its goal. It's already won. And while it's easy to mock the women who marched in Washington, D.C., not understanding the motives of some of the people, not to mention the principalities and powers behind those people, um, these women, many of them, are, are simply deceived. Forgive them, for they know not what they did. They don't understand what's going on. And they don't realize, like the woman in the cartoon there, they're in a sense, just punching themselves in the face, marching against the values they claim to hold. And sadly, marching double time straight into the gates of hell. They need prayer and they need loving Christians to explain to them why the model of the family laid out in the Bible is actually the best thing to happen to women in history. But if we come at them with anger or derision, they're not going to listen. Now, moving on. While it was good to see the new administration featuring a wide range of Christian denominations praying for our new president and his administration inauguration weekend, not all Christians are completely on board. John Piper, for example, founder of Desir Desiring God, wrote a blog post Friday at the Desiring God blog uh, saying that Donald Trump is morally unfit to be the president of the United States. Now, to be fair, he also said that Hillary Clinton is morally unfit, at least partly because of her very open support of abortion. But Piper made an excellent point. We Christians don't need a government that is morally fit to serve our God. The Christian faith was born and flourished under the reign of evil, murderous men like Herod the Great, Caligula, Nero, Domitian. He wrote, and I quote, followers of Christ are not Americans first. Our first allegiance is to Jesus and then to the God-inspired word of Scripture, the Bible. This is our charter, not the U.S. Constitution. End quote. Amen and amen. Well, President Trump wasted no time getting busy. Friday, his administration announced the U.S. would withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Two thumbs up. This trade deal would have further gutted the American middle class. The only real beneficiaries were multinational corporations who wanted the power to bypass domestic law and set up unelected tribunals whose rulings would supersede laws in America and the other nations of the TPP. The White House also announced Friday its intention to renegotiate the North American Free Trade Association, or agreement rather, NAFTA. Now, a lot of policy experts are out there blasting the Trump administration, saying they don't know what they're doing. This is bad for business, bad for the American people. Just take a look at who's signing their paychecks. Much of the criticism against Trump so far, I mean, come on, one full day in office so far, coming from people who profit from the globalist status quo. 
Coming up, will he or won't he? What is the president going to do with America's embassy to Israel? That's next on Skywatch TV. Recently, Skywatch TV held a No Fences Tell Your Story writing contest. After hundreds of writers submitted their inspirational stories, 10 Skywatch TV judges worked together to narrow it down to 10 beautifully told accounts in the brand new anthology, Learning to Lean. Right now, when you purchase Learning to Lean from the Skywatch TV store for only $19.95, you'll also receive absolutely free Living a Supernatural Life. Find out how to live in the reality of the supernatural realm, attuned in mind and heart to God's kingdom, coming in power through the Holy Spirit living in you. Plus, we want to help you tell your inspirational stories, so we're also including free a brand new, beautiful spiral-bound personal journal. Put to pen and organize your chapters, thoughts, and outlines, or use as the perfect Bible devotion companion for jotting down your favorite scripture verses. Altogether, this Learning to Lean anthology special offer holds a retail value of $55. Now for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling at skywatchtvstore.com. Be inspired as you learn to lean on God's miraculous grace at work in our lives today with the Learning to Lean Anthology special offer. A report over the weekend that the U.S. is going to move its embassy to Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem turns out to be premature. White House spokesman Sean Spicer told reporters over the weekend that uh, that discussion is still at the very beginning stages. But there are reports from Israel that President Trump has already dispatched an architect to Jerusalem. That from Jerusalem's deputy mayor, Meir Terjeman. So we'll see what happens there. Talks to end the civil war in Syria began today, Monday in Kazakhstan. Representatives from Russia, the U.S., Turkey, Iran, and Syrian government and rebel factions meeting in the Kazakh capital city of Astana. It appears that Turkey is ready to give up its demand that Bashar al-Assad step down as president of Syria. India has deployed hundreds of main battle tanks along its border with Pakistan. These are brand new T-90 battle tanks manufactured in Russia, 460 of them. This is in addition to the 900 tanks already in place along the Pakistani border. This comes months, months after Pakistan threatened India with a nuclear attack. And remember, India is also a nuclear power. The Pakistani threat in September followed India's strikes against alleged terrorists operating from inside Pakistani territory. The European Union has um, apparently lost its collective mind. The EU's, uh, the European Parliament's Legal Affairs Committee has voted to extend rights to robots, granting them electronic personhood. The vote wasn't even close, 17 to 2 in favor. Now, Tom Horn has been warning about this for years, but honestly, most Christians aren't even aware that this is a thing outside of science fiction movies. The concept of electronic personhood and robots' rights, something the EU has been talking about for years. The first draft of this bill was published last June. Th this is a dangerous concept. I mean, this sounds crazy, but it's, this, is, this has dangerous implications, and I'll tell you why. If you can have non-human persons, the next step is non-person humans. If personhood could be identified or defined as meeting a certain set of cognitive benchmarks, then there will be some people with cognitive disabilities or people who suffered severe head trauma that won't meet those benchmarks. And those people might be denied legal protection under the law if personhood is accepted here in the United States. It's already in Europe. Don't think it won't happen. It's coming. The next question, of course, is whether an artificial intelligence can sin. I mean, think about it. Who programs the artificial intelligence and on what do they base morality? A group of investors has put about $27 million into a fund designed to answer questions like this. They're supporting the Ethics and Governance of Artificial Intelligence Fund. This will be overseen by the Media Lab at MIT and the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard. Don't expect them to take a biblical worldview and apply it to artificial intelligence. 
here's the thing, though. If an AI truly becomes autonomous, why would it accept a standard of morality defined by humans at all? Or if it does, think about this. Would it consider we Americans, American adults in particular, a clear and present danger to the future of humanity because we have enshrined the right to kill unborn children in the Constitution, or at least defined it as a constitutional right. And finally, we are one step closer to recreating the one world government that was the goal of Nimrod at Babel. The Internet of Things is working toward a common language, took a step closer this year, At the Consumer Electronics Show, uh, the Open Connectivity Foundation had a display there, hoping to develop a single language, a common industry standard, to pull together everything from your light bulbs, thermostat, door locks, to uh, baby monitors, trash cans, tires on your car, (laughs) fridge cams. I'm sorry, Mr. Gilbert, your cholesterol level is too high to allow you to open the door and take that butter. Um, This would mean if they can bring the industry together and agree on a common standard, that everything around you would be speaking a common tongue, as it were, just like the people who tried to build the Tower of Babel. Yeah, everything old is new again. Nothing new under the sun. Here at Skywatch TV, we make these programs available to you for portable consumption. Take the audio version of these daily news updates, our weekly program, Sci Friday Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Download them to your smart device or MP3 player, the Skywatch TV podcast. You'll find it online, skywatchtv.com. Click the link in the top menu bar that says podcast. And you can meet the team, most of us anyway, from Skywatch TV. A group of us have been uh, invited by the coordinators of the Meet, or rather the uh, Hear the Watchmen conference. That's coming up in Dallas, March 31st through April 2nd. Just want to clarify something because we had a couple of questions from folks about this. Uh, This is not an official Skywatch TV event. Skywatch TV is not promoting or, uh, uh, shall we say, presenting the conference, sponsoring the conference. Uh, The coordinators have just been gracious enough to invite a number of us to be there. Myself, Sharon, uh, Jake Rahutsky, Josh Peck will be there along with Russ Dizdar, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Michael Lake, Pastor Billy Crone, Pastor Casper uh, McLeod, filmmaker Mike Norris, broadcaster John B. Wells, many others. You'll find more information at hearthewatchman.com. And by the way, if you're watching this Monday afternoon, there's still time through 9 p.m. Eastern time today, Monday, January 23rd. There's a special promo code in the most recent episode of, of Sci Friday. You'll find it at the Skywatch TV website. Watch the episode, get that promo code, and you can save $40 off the normal registration. Normal registration, $119, but with that promo code from the episode of Sci Friday, $77.70 through 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, today, Monday, January 23rd. You'll find us online, skywatchtv.com. All of the links to our social media sites are there. You'll find me online, derekpgilbert.com. Thanks for watching. As we keep watch, I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. the weekend, smashing windows, setting things on fire. Um, Half a million women, maybe more, swamped Washington, D.C. to protest something over the weekend. The turnout was double the original estimate. Um, It was a large gathering, more than half a million probably, featured speakers, celebrities, and a protest walk along the National Mall. Scarlett Johansson and Madonna were just two of the celebrities who showed up. Um, Madonna dropping the F-bomb a number of times on live television. Scarlett Johansson microphone got turned off when she started slamming Ivanka Trump. Madonna also publicly fantasizing about blowing up the White House, something she had to walk back later on her Instagram account. Didn't really mean it, Secret Service. Now, the media made a point of portraying this gathering as a grassroots movement founded by a concerned grandmother from uh, 
a march that made white women who were anti-Trump pro-abortion feel unwelcome. Um, This animosity, even within the anti-Trump movement, is part of the broader strategy by the powers, principalities, thrones, dominions, rulers of spiritual darkness to keep we humans in general, and we Christians in particular, angry at one another. Because regardless of where we fall on the political spectrum, if we are angry at one another, if we hate one another, the enemy has already won. Now I use the word irony, and I will use it again here because the irony of this march is stupendous. One of the organizers, Linda Sarsour, Hawaii, that's not entirely accurate. Between the election in November and this past weekend, you had to pull a lot of strings to get that many people moved from all over the country to Washington, D.C. I mean, that's not a lot of time to plan for a gathering like this. I mean, think about the last time you had to plan a cross-country vacation. Really, you're going to pull it off in eight weeks? Not quite so easy to do. Um, A former reporter for the Wall Street Journal started digging into the finances of some of the groups that were co-sponsoring or partnering together to bring the Women's March to Washington and found that more than 50 of the groups had financial ties to billionaire George Soros. Now, it's easy to portray Soros as the, um, the man behind the string, the puppet master. Just remember, he's only the... Women March on Washington against the rights of women. The Trump administration announces it's pulling out of the TPP. And the EU votes to grant human rights to electronic persons. It's Skywatch TV for Monday, January 23rd, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, Donald Trump is president of the United States. Just let that sink in for a minute. We might feel differently in four years, but it's nice to enjoy it now while it still feels good. Now, besides the violent protesters who rampaged through D.C. over human face on the real entities behind the spirit, the, you know, the spirits behind this movement, um, let's not get caught up in pointing a finger at him particularly. As Christians, we should be a little more discerning than that. Now, ironically, again, this was called a women's march, but Certain groups of women were not really welcome. Any woman who was pro-life, in fact, was uh, made, it was made clear to them that they were not going to be part of this march. One liberal feminist writing in the New York Times, uh, who voted for Trump, by the way, uh, opted to miss the event because she said it was pretty clear from the people she interacted with that this was really just a march for women who were anti-Trump. And other Uh, news accounts made it clear this was more than just a pro-abortion anti-Trump march. It was